Yeah, of course I restarted, didn't I? So, what I was saying there was, yes, it ripped. I looked over, saw me, saw, saw still image of me drinking tea and thought, that's crashed as the camera, as it does occasionally, and then realised it was the whole of OBS, which I restarted. Forgetting at that point, it automatically mutes my microphone. So when I came over here, forgot all about that, didn't I? Because I kicked off uh, switch scenes over there rather than coming over here and using the stream deck where I'd have seen it. Which reminds me, I must do something like make the icon green or something when it's okay and red when it's not that way it's even more visible. But yeah, 2am, you don't have to stay up late. Is what I was saying. I mean, that's what, 1 o'clock here in the UK and I don't think I was up at 1 o'clock <laughs> yesterday or this morning. <coughs> So, yeah, well, as I was just mentioning, to a muted microphone, I do sometimes kick off a, uh, uh, kick off at the odd vodcast and has like with this, just because it gets the chance for people who wouldn't normally be able to see me because of time zones, to see some things and... Um, then they can follow and come back and catch what casts later, you see. You up late night gaming with friends. Yeah. I understand. Um, these days, I'd be alright one night. The next night, I'd be falling asleep. Which I was tonight. <laughs> Earlier on this evening, I was, uh, I was trying to watch a video. And I still haven't seen the end of it. And I tried three times to watch the end of that video. So I'm kind of waking up a bit now that I'm streaming. It's the week. Oh, well, that's true. It is, isn't it? Yeah, I've forgotten that. And by the way, if you hear any <coughs> bangs, whistles, whines, and all sorts of weird noises, there are fireworks going on outside. And it's quite noisy at times. So if you hear any sort of odd noises like that, most likely it's a firework. On the other hand, if it's a company behind me running that way, it's probably a fire. <laughs> right, now then, down here. More sort of to shade in down here. So, it gets lighter as we go down. I'll do is do it, do it light, and then I can make it darker. Usual sort of thing. So, how have you been today, Super Speedy? How's uh, world domination going? Um. Yeah. Sorry, my my um, my brain is a little bit sort of sideways. I have been looking at servers today. I need uh, I need to rebuild my uh, my server here. In software wise, it's uh, considerably out of date, and it could do with a software build. The only thing is, I can't easily take it offline to do that because of the service it's running and I don't want them offline so what I'm actually going to be doing is buying a new server and then building um, building a new environment on the new server so I can switch all the services up onto that then rebuild the old server and then I'll have a cluster so I'll have resilience so it's been I've been uh, sort of sort of spending quite a bit of today sort of reading server reading server specs 
Uh, but micro server specs. So a little tiny servers. And this one is a little tiny server. And uh, it'll be quite a nice box. For what is a relatively cheap price as well. I think um, euro wise it will probably be about 220 euros. Which, uh, it, uh, which isn't bad, to which you have to add the discs. But uh, you made. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, that's fantastic. That's uh, a good thing to happen. Now that transition is a bit harsh, so let's um, soften it a little bit. That's going to be fun doing that in there. Mm. This is where I wish pyrography wise there was the equivalent of a mask. I suppose there could be if it was metal ish sort of where I could if I was spray painting I could mask that in various ways and um, and then just spray happily over the top but uh, pyrography is not quite the same. It looks better. I wonder why Twitch thought it would be a good idea to hold that message you just uh, sent. Which is what it just did before it, before it had to release it. I wonder what it was about the message that it didn't like. Well, that's going better than I thought it might. How's your game going, by the way? Uh, I, or have you been taking some time off from it to uh, uh, to carry on with real life <laughs> and play other games? interesting face you won't release okay yeah you're playing your yeah playing the new game that you've got <laughs> you'll be addicted to it for a while and then and then all of a sudden it'll you'll just decide not to play it anymore for a while Kind of well, I, I'm, I'm sort of um, projecting there because it's kind of how I often start games. I'll play them, not virtually non-stop for quite some time, and then all of a sudden I'll just go. I'm not playing that today. <laughs> <laughs> 
and I'll, I will probably not play it for several months then. do now is replicate what I've done that side on this side. Basically just fade it in. Sounds like you were doing quite well. Nice to you did um oh you you killed eleven people as opposed to, okay. Or oh, eleven people died and there were just three left. His pen just felt like it was going cold then. Let's fill in the rest of this and then... His pen doesn't feel... It's on. It just feels odd. It just doesn't. This pen just sort of feels cold. Didn't seem as though it was um, applying much heat to the wood. I think that looks okay. <laughs> uh, you got <laughs> you, you you got so distracted by playing the game you didn't play the game. Yeah. Okay. Kind of funny, <laughs> is that? <laughs> right, um, so that's, done, that's come out quite nicely there. Yeah, I've got a little bit of... A little bit of heat bleed over that I didn't see. Uh, 
I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm not. I don't think I'm going to go over that again area again. So I'm just going to see if I can just lighten that up a bit. Now I wouldn't normally do this if I was going to apply pyrography over the top. But the intent is to leave this uncoloured, so I'm just scraping the surface like this. this is about the only possible way you've got of actually removing pyrography. So if you've done something wrong, you can do this. But if I were to apply pyrography over the top of this now, I scratched it like this, the surface texture is different and will be different and it will show up differently it'll look different um, the pyrography will kind of stand out if I was to do it I'm not going to but because um, I've no need to I wanted that to be sort of white mm, it's not bad I may do a little bit more later but that that's kind of the only way you can erase as such is to, to actually sort of smooth the surface off uh, and I've actually roughened it and uh, applied pyrography in such a small area you probably wouldn't notice it but if I'd done it in somewhere like this uh, and then applied pyrography over the top you would actually see see it quite clearly um, right so we've done that bit so let's do the other another hard bit which is is do the same thing as I've done down sort of here up there um, and that's all outlined as well, so this isn't as dark, which is good. Makes it, going, makes it means it's going to be a bit easier to do, uh, but not that much easier. Let's turn the heat down to start with and cool the tip off. It's one time when I do blow on the tip like that there because I want it to cool off fairly quickly. I'm going to start by putting in the place where the band is across the top. This is like a scroll or a banner. It's got a, um, a lighter coloured colored edge. So I'm just putting in where I want it to be. So that when I'm colouring it in, I know where to stop. Yeah. I'm going to do the same on the bottom as well. also a band there Oh, that hair too late. If anybody is wondering what I mean by saw that hair too late, if you um, get hair on, well, a hot soldering iron, a pyrography tool, uh, it cooks really quickly and it smells terrible. So it's something to be avoided, but I only saw it too late.
Right. This is a mid sort of colour. So I think what I'm going to do here is, is colour most of it in and then go back over and add the shading to it. hold it like this so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm quite pleased. My um, skill in uh, filling in at large areas like this is improving quite a bit. Which I'm quite pleased about. And after all, it's always good when you can do something better than you used to be able to do it, but it also looks better. Which is, which is why I'm particularly pleased. And I do the same thing across the top. Right, um, good evening anybody that may be watching and lurking in the background. That's okay if you do that, it's not a problem. It'd be nice if you came and said hello, but if you don't want to, it's not really a problem. After all, since it's how I often watch a lot of streams, I can't really say to anybody else that they should do it either. Especially in my stream. If you had no clue about what you're uh, watching, and then I'd say to you, why didn't you read the title? Um, this is about pyrography. Pyrography, described as wood burning. Um, although I'm not uh, not burning any wood at all today, and very rarely do I do that. <coughs> and I'm not attempting pyrography when I do. But uh, pyrography, I also describe it more as cooking with wood. It tends to be more accurate 
It's a bit like the same process you make toast with, if you're familiar at all with making toast. I'm using here an electrically heated tool which saves me using the old style of stuff that the sailors for example would have used which would be a sailmaker needle held over a tiny spirit burner. It would take doing something like this quite a lot of work. So those old pyrography items made by the sailors are quite amazing with the intricacy that some of them have achieved with tools. That would have taken them hours and hours to do. Not that this is going to go any quicker though, by the way, because I'm using an electrically heated tool. It still takes hours and hours and hours. Now, apart from the fact that this um, tool is rather hot, um, it is operated from the mains but it's operating at a low voltage, around about the same as a torch battery. So quite, uh, quite low voltage and safe from that perspective. Not as safe from the perspective of the fact it's hot and will burn you quite easily. That's interesting, isn't it? Talk about it's not burning wood but burns you um of course it kind of doesn't it cooks you uh, but we describe that sort of thing as a burn so in other words this this tip is safe for me to touch from the voltage point of view it's not safe for me to touch from the fact that it's hot This particular tool is called a shader, generally speaking because it's used to do shading, which is kind of what I'm doing here, as opposed to lines. What this is, as is probably a good guess given what uh, uh, the fact that I'm broadcasting in the game uh, channel is, uh, of course, this is a Hearthstone card suggested by Super Speedy, who is somewhere around in this uh, in the chat. I'm not actually sure whether. He suggested I do this because he wanted to see this card done or he thought I couldn't do it. Not sure, he might be right. <laughs> if that was uh, his intention. <laughs> I will actually finish it, that I can say. It might not look as good as I want it to do, <laughs> but I will finish it. Concentrating a little bit on getting right in between these letters. Without particularly applying any pyrography to the letters themselves, I'm trying to keep them the natural wood colour. Now then, that probably you're murdering enemies at the moment. That's all right. You carry on murdering enemies. I'm just giving you credit or blaming you for whatever comes out out of this. <laughs> I 
I was just kind of laughing a little bit then, as you've heard, um, because I was just thinking that um, one thing that um, I don't particularly like the smell of too much, a lot, is, is a lot of burning wood, because it's bonfire night outside in the UK. There's a lot of burning wood out there. There's a lot of fireworks as well. Fireworks, I don't find smell too bad. But the burning wood gets a bit acrid after a while and, and starts to bother my eyes. I'm just thinking, I don't like the smell of burning wood. Here I am cooking the stuff. And it doesn't bother me. Kind of weird. Um. Right. Let's make this a bit darker. I can add shading when I do it in, in one of two ways. I can either shade directly first pass or I can do it like this and then go over again and uh, shade in a second or third pass. In this particular case we're doing it in the in a subsequent pass. We've gone over it once uh, to put like an, an undercoat on if you like and they're now going back over to uh, apply more shading yeah it would be um, sorry I make it a, I'm using a reference picture and I make comments about what I'm doing as I'm doing it so they it would be um, there was a me sort of describing to myself a shadow which is it would be darker there than around this side just because of the way light bends around things um, that and the way that the artist who drew the original image wanted it to look uh, i've just turned the heat up a bit Sometimes it can be um, a little bit more difficult to get an area which you've already applied pyrography to to take a bit more heat and go darker. Sometimes the best way of doing that then is to turn the heat up and just um, work a little bit faster. No, you didn't. You were quite early now. Welcome back. Uh, Clam Shudder. You've never heard of Pyro before. Welcome to the stream. And uh, yeah, the science of cooking wood. Often known as wood burning. Although, as I often say, I don't burn wood. In fact, um, that would be a very bad thing to do in terms of uh, these images. And uh, yes, nice to see you again. You know I didn't. You. Oh no, you didn't. That's quite hard to say. Um, it's a similar technique to scratchboard in that, uh, sort of, in that it's monochrome, and you kind of, well, I suppose with scratchboard you can't you can use black ink to hide what you've done, but it, it's. Sort of a similar in that you um, you've got one go one go at it. Um, is it similar to ink? What you can do is with um, probably using more of a pen that looks like this one is turn the heat up on this and then it 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 will create really black lines and then you can use that like a black ink pen exactly like you use a black ink pen, including cross hatching and things like that. Um, but that's probably about the, the, the most simil similarity you've got with it. I mean, scratchboard, as I say, um, 
you can erase what you've done by putting more blank ink down but because you've scraped it you can sort of see where you were if you know what I mean this is sort of a similar I can do but do the opposite I can put um, some color onto the board like this and I can scrape it and it, the color goes away but if I put more color over the top it doesn't look right sort of same but inverse um, but no this is this is kind of how can I describe it it's kind of like more using like a felt pen if you like um, but it's one where the, if I hold a pen in in one place uh, it gets dark um, if I've got a piece of practice wood around uh, so it's you know it's kind of like a uh, I suppose like if you if you could imagine a felt pen that wasn't flowing very well so if you want to make it dark you kind of hold it in place so that the ink sort of soaks through a bit uh, and if you want to make it quite sort of faint you sort of keep moving the pen <laughs> um, I find well I find it quite fun um, especially if you like me if you're liking doing things like scraper board or pen and ink I think you probably once you've developed the skill of using the pen, you'll get on with it because it's the same monochrome style of work. You can do exactly the same style. Um, indeed, I mean, I'm using the technique I'm using here, I describe as photorealistic. It's not like a photograph, but it's it, it's like a photograph in that you don't have uh, sort of black lines around everything like you would do like in a cartoon. Um, but uh, certainly, you know, with. Um, Sorry, I'm not sure. I am sure, thank you very much. Um, if you want it to do it using just the uh, just the, the pen style of pen, you can do exactly the same as you would do with scraper board, cross hatching um, and uh, using fine lines and thick lines in order to sort of create a, um, a shading effect. The other thing um, about trying it is you've got a uh, there are different tools that you can use to try um, pyrography with and potentially you, you might have the odd one if you've got any interest in doing electronics you've probably got a soldering iron you can use a soldering iron to do this although I'd use a tip specifically for it uh, I wouldn't use a tip that you use for soldering and I wouldn't use the tip that you use for pyrography soldering because it will be contaminated but um, you can use a, use a uh, soldering iron tip. So if you already have a soldering iron, that's a quick way of trying it out. Uh, the sort of tool that I'm using here and the machine that I'm using, which looks like that there. Uh, tip a double slip a little bit. This one's called a razor tip. I think actually the company's... Um, Canadian off the top of my head. It's available a lot in America and it's not too bad in Europe but there's just there's not as many suppliers. Um, these are relatively expensive. So you, if you've already got a soldering iron that's a good one to just try because if you get yourself a, a new tip for it you can try you can have an idea what it's like uh, to do pyrography with. Um, there are people that will use a soldering iron and can produce some really amazing artwork including stuff like this you just don't, it, well unless you've got a temperature controlled soldering iron but um, if you've just got a standard single temperature you can you can do shading you just have to do it very quickly as opposed to slowly um, so that's a good way if, for you in this particular case would be to try at least something out even if you only just do lettering or something like that, you'll get a feel for it. Um, there's an, e an, an intermediate type of machine. It essentially looks like a soldering iron. They get called wood burners or pyrography tools. They look like soldering irons if you're familiar with a soldering iron. Big... Uh, I've put mine away. I was going to say, usually it's sort of a big blue or pink handle they tend to have silver barrel with a, a tip on but they tend to have different shaped tips uh, so you'll get some pointy ones you'll get some flat ones you'll get some that look a bit like so sort of this sort of shape 
like a leaf shape perhaps they can they can get used in two ways they can get used to do things like this um, or they can you can use them like a brand or a stamp because um, they come with shaped tips like a leaf shape or uh, a diamond shape that sort of thing um, so that's useful if you just want to do straight shapes and make up patterns with shapes um, the only thing I find about those is you're holding it back here and your tips are over there and I kind of find that a little bit difficult to control so uh, for me this type of machine where I can hold it almost at the very tip I can use this like a pencil is, um, is, is what I prefer but as I say unfortunately it's a relatively expensive tool um, oh no you didn't yeah I've used that type yeah it's like a soldering they can be very good actually I mean the one the nice thing about them um, is that they hold a lot of heat so if you if you do want to do uh, sort of a lot of black area they can be very nice for that because they, they, they're generally a relatively powerful heater uh, in them like a soldering iron will be a 30 watt soldering iron sort of thing um, and you can do and they sort of have fairly chunky copper tips which hold a lot of heat and you can sort of do something like that in one pass fairly quickly uh, which with this sort of tool is is a lot slower this is about 10 10 or 15 watts of heat but this is heated directly on the tool at the end and yeah that's that's kind of why I don't like those because of course it is hard to get that sort of detail they do come with some nice points um, but because of it I, I suppose it's really more like anything else isn't it? it's practice as to it but it's a bit of an awkward thing to hold and and work with for me there are people and if you look on um, YouTube you can find people that do some amazing artwork with stuff like that but uh, yeah with these sorts of things I can get really tiny fine lines with this um, I mean that's not even the tiniest just down here um, above here I, by turning this on its edge I can use the edge of this tool and I can not only use the edge if I tilt it I can use the corner of the edge so I can get uh, get some amazingly fine lines let's just see if I can do one just see if I can manage to do one down here Now this one actually is, I've got this turned up too much to do this properly, but uh, if I turn this down a bit I'll get an even finer line, but it's it's hair thin. In fact, uh, I actually, you can get heated knives for things like this as well, which are good for, if you like doing cutting a plastic sheet or, or something like that. Um, I can actually find and get a fine, I do have one around here somewhere. In fact, it'll be under here. Uh, where is it? That the one? Yeah. So you can get like this. They're, they're a little tiny blade, uh, but I can actually get finer lines with this than I can with that, even when that's using it on the cutting edge, because this kind of sinks too far into the wood and the heat spreads. But it's uh, it's a nice tool. I mean that's um, that's the other advantage about this tool. If I want to change pens, he says, take that off the end of there because this is hot. Take that off there. That's now a working tool, and that end is hot, so I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> um. Yep, yep. Too much, you see. Um, it's, it's created a wider line <laughs> so that's hot so I shall just unplug that and plug my other one back in that's one of the advantages of this if you want to do it with the other style of wood burner like you know uh, say oh no you didn't has got you kind of all well if you're careful I suppose you kind of have to wait for it to cool a bit get some pliers because it's hot unscrew the end in various ways depending on the tool to take the tip off Put it somewhere where it's not going to do any damage because it stays hot for an awfully long time. Take your other one, put it on, screw it on, and then carry it. Well, wait for it to heat up and carry on. So, if you like changing tools a lot, this sort of thing is is quite good for that. 
I just need to leave that somewhere to cool off before I put it away. Um, you can get all sorts of things. This is a this is a flat shader. This one's a spoon shader because it's spoon shaped, <laughs> like a little little bowl. This is often easier for a beginner to use than a flat shader, um, which is why I had it to start with because I was a beginner. And um, it's not bad to use. I, I uh, still do use it from time to time, but this is kind of one of my favourite uh, tools. Oops, wrong. Uh, what have I got here? Oh, this is just a, a different type of flat shader. So you can get all sorts of uh, tips. So two flat. This is a smaller flat shader than that one. That's a wider tip, and you can get wider ones still for doing large areas. Let me move that out of the way so I don't accidentally melt it. So I was shading in on here. Yeah, so it, it gets described as wood burning, but as hopefully you can see, I'm not doing any burning at all. <laughs> uh, it is actually rather like cooking. If you've ever made toast, it's a, it's, it's a similar thing to making toast in that um, you apply heat and as the toast dries out and uh, the surface goes brown. This is kind of what's exactly is what's happening here. And they, uh, just like we toast, if you apply a lot of heat, uh, it will go really brown to the point of going black and starting to give off vapour. And wood's exactly the same. Now, as, as I was mentioning earlier, there's, there's kind of three different styles, uh, broadly speaking, in the way in which you can do pyrography. And it is a, it's a real broad categorization. There's uh, hundreds of different styles, really. But there is this kind of style, which I can tend to describe as photorealistic, just from the point of view of when you take a photograph, you don't get lines around anything. You know, if you, you look at my shirt, the shirt stops. There isn't a black line around the, the edge of the shirt, even when it looks like it. Um, so yeah, it's just colour. Colour comes and it changes colour. So that's what I mean by photorealistic. Um, there's then you take that to a more cartoon style where you get a black outline and then you colour colour in. That sort of th thing you often see that a lot in pyrography but it will t it tends to be um, I'm trying to think of it it's of a, of a good analogy for it but uh, what you tend to see then is more um, uh, it, it's it's moving more towards a straight black and white type of thing and then there is the straight black and white uh, you know the you're using a tool which is as virtually as hot as it will go and you're either stamping or you're, you're making marks which are just pure black on, on, on the wood there's no intermediate colouring at all, no shading, no filling in type of thing you might get some cross hatching uh, in that sort of style as well all of them do make really nice pictures, it just depends on what you prefer stylized, stylized realism yeah okay <laughs> Kind of hard to describe sort of this sort of um, technique in a way that makes that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, you can you can get photographic like results, like uh, you know the like. Um, if only because, for example, this is of a ginger pussy cat, <laughs> so it, it's actually lifelike colour for him. Um, but uh, you can get that sort of thing. But you can also put texturing in as well. I don't the one of them's the other side. But um, because what happens when you apply heat to wood is, um, especially high intensity heat, 
is the wood shrinks away from it. Uh, so it, were you to run your finger over this here, you'd actually be able to feel the, the lettering because they're indented. And down here where the black is, this is indented uh, quite, quite a bit because the wood has shrunk away from the heat. So what you can do is you can use that technique um, to actually create texture. And generally, generally when I do the cats, um, that's what I will do is I'll use the end of the tool and I will create a fur-like texture. And it, it looks like fur because it's kind of drawn fur, which is quite... Do I ever do it? Not with heat. That's kind of um, it's kind of a reversed uh, reversed uh, pattern. So you you would be uh, in trying to sort of chisel into the wood, if you like, with uh, pyrography. You you'd be blackening around what you want to leave. Now, if I'm going to do chisel work, I'll actually get the chisels out and I do um, wood carving. Which is something that gets done on stream as well. I'm just trying to look if I've got something around here. They're all over the other side. I can show you where a piece if you would like to look at one uh, of wood carving. But uh, that's something else which <coughs> has been done on, on stream. And it's probably easier. What you might do with, um, uh, with uh, carving, heat carving, would be things like gourds perhaps, or... Um, on things like plastic, where you would uh, you wouldn't be using a really high heat, you'd be using just enough heat to, to soften the plastic to carve with it, and then you'd be using that sort of tool, which is a knife type of tool. Clam chowder, uh, clam chowder. Apologies, clam chowder. Thank you very much for the follow. I, I, I'm looking over there, and it's on the screen in front of me. Okay. It would be an interesting sort of thing to try, sort of a, a reversed, reversed um, embossing. Emboss the emboss the stuff you don't want to be there. Hmm. I'm let me let me just get the other uh, piece. Getting famous again. <laughs> Thank you, Super Speed. When we're talking about, um, oh, we're carving. If you're on about carving, yeah. That's the last thing that was done on, on stream. If you're on about pure carving. When I was on about uh, the, the texturing uh, with with the um, pyrography tools, it, it, it's like this. And this actually tends to look very much like um, animal fur because I'm actually using that edge, very hot edge. So the wood shrinks away from it, and you get these really fine sort of lines, which look very much like fur. But yes, carving. Uh, this is hand carved using hand chisels rather than um, big um, mallet-based chisels. I also do rotary carving as well. So we, but I have not done any of that on stream as yet. It's a bit of a messy thing to do with rotary carving. And uh, I tend to need to set up an extractor and things like that. But uh, yeah, this this is this is a it's a dragon, fairly obviously, I guess. But it's called it's a dragon called Ruth. This took uh, well a lot of hours, in excess of sixty hours, to do. And I only know that because I'm currently uploading. The, this was done on stream, one hundred percent done on stream. And I know it's more than 60 hours because I've currently just uploaded video 31 uh, of me carving this to YouTube. It's there's, so there's a, re, uh, a real time 31 two hour long, at least two hour long videos of uh, of me carving this, and it's not complete yet. So I don't actually know how many there are. 
So if you if you want to see some carving um, before I get round to doing it again on stream, if you look at uh, youtube.com slash Sarah there is a whole um, a whole 60 odd hours so far of me carving Ruth here. Put that to one side. We'll do some more of what this stream is about, which is biography. And um, yeah, the scrapper. Yeah, I do do scrapper board. I've done that on stream as well. Uh, and there is uh, some images will pop up in the reel here from time to time. Um, but again, I think I've. I think I've put at least one scraper board up on, on the YouTube. Uh, I tried out scraper board for the first time on stream and didn't, and the first image I did was a portrait, so... Uh, I don't know where John is. Is he over here? Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is starting to become an art show, so I might stop in a second and actually carry on with what I'm doing. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of a show for Scraperboard, as you're familiar with Scraperboard. That's my very, very first Scraperboard image ever. Done live on stream. That's of a mu musician called John Miles. And he's actually one of the lead producers. Uh, the Rangers of the um, Night at the Palms. He's also, well, when she was uh, touring, Tina Turner's um, lead guitarist and um, band leader, manager. I think what we did then, oh, th there had to be what, there had to be that image. Now uh, that was the second one. We had to do that. Earthrise. This um, scraper board it just suits space images so well. And then, then we thought, oh, well, then I tried a bit of colour. So I don't know if you if you were aware, uh, Clam Chudder, but you can you can put ink onto a scraper board, and it's amazing what difference it makes. Just that green there changed that image completely when we did it. I say we, that was the stream of course, because I was done on stream and, and everybody was watching. But we uh, did the cottage uh, and the grass and then put the green on the grass. And the difference it made is phenomenal. It just makes it completely stand out. Uh, it's ink. Literally green, it, it's ink. Uh, is that. Quite a, quite a saturated ink, but it's, it, is just, it is just ink. You could use watercolour, I guess. Um, watercolours are pigments more, and um, I kind of think it wouldn't look as good because the, the pigments would tend to settle on the clay rather than in the clay. The ink being a dye, um, so it dyes the top surface of the of the the underlying clay. So you don't tend to sort of lose any of the detail or anything like that. And then. That was the last one we did. Imagine that coming out of the night towards you. <laughs> Again, it's, yeah, the the the, um, the scraper board is great for doing sort of night images, night images, space images, fantastic because of the really black background colour. But. Uh, I must get these varnished um, because I have to be very careful not to scrape them. But they, they are they are examples of what gets done on the stream. I, it describes below the stream window. It'll say I'm a variety streamer. Uh, that's because we do a variety of um, crafts. 
you've seen carving, you've seen seeing pyrography here, that's scraper board. There's something called punch craft, which is a miniature rug making style that we've been doing. Um, the, oh, the other one is, is the chain mail jewellery, which is most of what is, is in there, just because it's actually faster to do a chain mail piece than it is to do a pyrography of an A4 piece like this. This will probably take something like about 10 hours to do, or possibly a bit longer. Um, whereas a ch you know, most a, ch a chain mail bracelet, for example, is sort of one to two hours, depending on complexity. Uh, or several hours when it's something like this one, uh, which took uh, took quite a few hours to do. It's about ten hours, I think, to do that. Um, but that's partly down to the size of the rings. And um, we do other things: glass engraving. So uh, can't. I should I should have shown you this while I had the black boards, but. Um, Put my hands behind it so glass engraving this is a recycled coffee jar and uh, this one has got to, is an aquarium style so you've got an angel fish a little bit of seaweed and um, a seahorse on the side and then there's a magic dot that's just dot um, but that, that's just sort of still, I think we were doing, uh, yeah, last, not so long ago, doing some airbrushing. Um, yeah, so some, some airbrushing and then uh, of, uh, on black papers. So I, was, I was working white on black uh, and also preparing some vases for painting at some point. So these were, these were sprayed, ready to have something uh, painted on them. At some point, when I decide something, something Greek probably or Mediterranean. So, yeah, if you, if you like seeing a variety of crafts, here's a good place to see it. Right. So, having said all that, I better do some more of this, hadn't I? Because I have a tendency to to stop stop doing what I'm doing when I start talking, partly because I don't want to ruin what I'm doing, um, and I do want to see chat, but partly because sometimes doing two things at the same time is a little bit difficult. This is proving to be quite good fun because a lot of the that's quite all right, uh, clown chair. That's that's kind of one reason why I broadcast. <laughs> um, when I started doing um, uh, pyrography is the word I was looking for. Um, but when I started doing doing any of the crafts that I the, that I do. I've always, I, I sort of would look on things like YouTube and stuff like that to get some idea of what I need it to do, how I need it to do it, and just get a, a start, if you like. And a lot of the time, what I found was uh, lots of videos of people going, um, you need this, and you do it this way. And it's kind of, why do I need that, and why do I have to do it that way? And I couldn't actually find answers to stuff like that. And uh, the number of activities that I've done now, uh, where, for example, there, there is a there's a crossover or a technique that I use here, which is similar to the one that gets used in airbrushing. And because I understand why I'm doing it in airbrushing, I kind of understand why I do it here. Um, but I wouldn't have known that from looking at videos and things. So part of the reason why I was streaming is so that if anybody else has an interest in doing such as yourself, you can then come and ask questions if you like, or, or see what I'm doing and 
Um, hopefully I try and stay away from saying, saying this is how you do it, it's this is how I do it. You may do it differently and be just as successful. You may do it differently and be a lot more successful. You may have a better way of doing it. Uh, and I find it's, a, it's, it's good to exchange information like that. So, Of course the other reason why I do uh, uh, streaming is because it actually forces me to do some art. Otherwise I'd sit and watch videos all night. I'm just shading this in. I find it easier actually to do um, things like portraits or the cat portraits than something something like this, just because on a portrait, no, even two places that are side by side don't have the same colours, variations all over the place. Whereas with something like this, sort of, even though it's meant to be like a cloth, for example. Um, the artist that drew the original picture for the card has a sort of it's a fairly consistent colour. It's a lot harder to do consistency with pyrography. But I'm learning. It's kind of one reason why I never do the same or try never to do the same thing twice, although sometimes I do just because I enjoy the image. But uh, and I try something new in the way I'm doing it. Like when I uh, showed Theo there, um, the ginger kitten. Um, I showed you the two black. I uh, showed you one of the two black cats that I'd done, uh, where I'd used the fur technique that I, I developed. And when I came to do Theo, I de decided I didn't want to use that. I wanted to try something new, which was more flat color like this, and use use a different shading technique, and try and see if I can get the same sort of uh, representation without using the actual. Um, for cutting technique sort of thing that I'm using with this pen because the the cutting technique takes a long time to do. I won't say I did every single hair if you know what I mean but there's a there's a lot of hair marks on that on those uh, and literally they um, they took I think but uh, I did two plaques like that and each of them took about 10 hours a piece to do Whereas sort of something that size would normally take two or three hours in a flat sort of technique because the cutting you just did thousands and thousands and thousands of extremely fine lines really um, with the tool that's hot enough for the wood to shrink away from it. Uh, it looks good um, but uh, it takes a long time to do so with Theo I wanted to try something different. So I need to just Shade that in a little bit, it's a bit, I probably want to make the background a little bit darker as well. Right, so, yeah, I'm going to go all the way across the top here, sort of, I think the idea of this is it, it's, I, it's, sort of folded over slightly so we've got a, a shadow all the way down here and down the sides. It kind of looks like that to me. So I apply a bit more heat with this I think. So this um, this particular machine that I'm using is uh, what, it's about to say temperature controlled, it's not uh, I can turn up the heat, so I can I can make the uh, this tip hotter or cooler within a range, which allows me um, to to vary how I work with the tool. Whenever you're applying pyrography, it's about the quantity of heat that you transfer to, in this case, the wood. It doesn't have to be wood; it could be card paper. Goads are used often. You can use bone. Although that smells terrible while you're doing it. Um, and quite a few other sort of organic materials really. You can do it on, on um, like dried grass and things. Uh, so it's, you can apply pyrography to lots of things. Some things are easier to do than others. So paper is really hard to do. 
Mainly because it's thin. So if you use thick card, for example, it's a bit, e it's a, well, it's a lot easier to do pyrography on thick card than it is to do it on thin paper. But you can actually apply pyrography to paper and card, and uh, it doesn't set them on fire, despite what most people think. At least not with this tool. This does not get hot enough to set them on fire. Um, even if I make this glow orange, it's not quite hot enough. Now, um, what I was saying is, it's the quantity of heat. So I can I can make this an area on here go black uh, or darker by applying more heat, and I do that in one of two ways. I either do that by holding the pen in place for longer, that may either be physically holding it there or just moving it slower so it travels over the surface slower. So that applies more heat during that time or I can turn the heat of the tip up but then um, that means I have to move faster uh, in areas that I don't want as much heat to be applied. So when, it, when I'm working at high heat levels, I have to work faster than when I turn it down. And, uh, and then I work slower, so I, I move the pen across a lot slower. It's actually easier to, to, to control when you do it slower. Because you're moving more slowly, things don't happen too quickly for you to control. Uh, but it can get a little bit frustrating just because it takes a, a longer time to do. So you move it slower um, because it needs more heat and then you sort of get a bit tired of that and turn the heat up. But it's kind of something that you get with practice to be, the, as you practice you can work at higher heat levels just because you're used to how the tool is going to react. I've just made a mistake there. I've gone over the edge, but luckily I think there's probably a black area around there, so um, that will sort of get hidden. Um, sort of. Sort of. Um, if you do it if you do it, if you apply low heat for longer, it, it it cooks the wood slower, and the wood actually tends to shrink away less. If you apply uh, high heat really quickly, you tend to get uh, the wood sort of just immediately sort of vanishing away from the uh, from the tip. The other thing about it is with fairly high heat, the wood sort of goes a bit. Uh, like uh, clay or plasticine it gets really soft and you can move it around so uh, if you apply it if you press down with the tool you can actually get tool marks in the wood and uh, you have to sort of if you're applying high heat you've either got to sort of just be really light in your touch if you don't want sort of lots of marks or uh, sort of I keep going over ironing it down um, if you apply heat uh, less quickly if you, you know, hold it move it slower it doesn't get that plastic as well it doesn't get as much that sort of plastic effect and it's a lot easier to have a smoother surface afterwards than you do um, using high heaters and that's that's an effect which you notice m more on the finer tipped tools like this and this because uh, if I put this at high heat, it almost disappears into the wood. You almost can't stop it. It's it's kind of like put it, holding it on the surface of water. It just sinks in. Whereas this kind of floats a little bit just because of the width of the tool. Um, I prefer to do it slowly if I can. Um, you get a lot like here. You get, uh, this was done in about four or five passes. Um, but you get a, a lot sort of smoother looking um coloring than you do at uh, things if you look at this lettering for example if you i don't know if it can be seen but it's a little bit sort of 
I can see it's certainly here. It kind of gives the impression of being made with lots of little dots. It hasn't. I, I did sort of. I was using the other tool at relatively high heat, but it's really hard to to keep it level. So it sort of has you know has, it's just got variations in height as I've gone drawing the letter. And when I'm looking at it here, I can see those sort of dot-like effects. Whereas using the bigger tool on things like this, there is sort of a an embossing sort of look to it, but it's a heck of a lot smoother. But otherwise, the other thing that you can get uh, very easily, the higher heat you get, you get to a stage where you... Uh, the wood gives off a heck of a lot of vapour. It's, it's possibly where people get the term wood burning from. But it, um, it gives off a heck of a lot of vapour and goes black. It carbonises. It doesn't exactly burn, but it sort of carbonises, sort of same end point almost. And... Um, that in itself has a dullish sort of odd looking texture it doesn't look very good and if you if you end up with it uh, it tends to stick to the tools as well and then um, the carbon crystals are quite sharp and you can feel it as you're going over it it, it feels rough and scratchy and you actually can end up scratching what you've already done because of that so you end up having to clean the tool so yeah, there is there is a difference, but it depends. You know, it's on what you like. If I was doing sort of freehand lettering and I wanted black, I'd probably use quite high heat just because I can do it in one pass there, and yeah, you can write with it like a pen. Um, trying to do something like this in one pass at high heat, trying to get the get it straight would be really challenging. You need this, a lot of skill to do it. I don't have enough skill to work at high heat to do that in one pass. Uh, to try and keep a consistent colour and to keep that sharp edge that I was after. So it, it's sort of um, skill, practice, and te uh, skill, practice, technique, and just what you feel like. Let me see if I can do a bit more of this. Um, yeah. I have a tendency to want to work fast just because I'm used to using a pencil. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, gra <laughs> I'm gradually learning to. Uh, Based on your postcode settings, here are a few nearby popular ones Morrison's, McDonald's restaurants, Dooney's, and SD supplements. To get more accurate results, go to the Alexa app and enter your address. So how about that? <laughs> Quite why she perked up and told me about restaurants, I am not sure. I have no idea what I said that sounded like her name. He says avoiding it so she doesn't wake up again. And sounded like I was asking about food. And it's also weird because she knows what my address is. Um, yeah, I tend, to I tend to want to work fast, but I'm, I am learning to slow down and uh, just have a little bit more patience with it. What, um, I actually prefer working slower in terms of heat settings. It, 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 it does make it easier to control how dark you want something like this. I'm fading this out. If I was using a really high heat setting, I'd have moments to decide that's that's enough, and I'd be doing it at really sort of quite high levels of movement, and the chances of it going just that little bit too much are um, significantly greater with high heat as well. So when you're colouring, perhaps, um, to start with at least, until you've developed the skill, it's probably better to work with a lower heat level. I 
think I'm going to have to start muting her when I start a stream. If only because to stop the interruptions, but occasionally she'll actually say something which is um, uh, amusing in context. Nothing to do with what I was talking about, but I'll be doing something, uh, you know, talking like how to do a biography, for example. And she'll perk up and say, I don't know how to do that. To which, of course, my usual reply is something along the lines of, I know, but that's why I'm telling you. <laughs> but there we go. That's just my humour. Now, I guess if um, talking about pyrography, what I'd like to do is say a little bit about wood. Because wood tends to be the most used uh, material on which pyrography is done. Although, as I say, gourds are quite, um, quite popular as well. Uh, but uh, wood is an interesting thing from the point of view of pyrography. Some wood is good, some wood is more challenging. You've got a couple of factors with wood. One of the things that generally speaking you're after is wood which is very lightly coloured like this is. This is birch that I'm using here um, and poplar is another one which is quite good. Um, basswood, or also known as European lime, is also a good wood, although it's not as white as this. The reason why you'd want whiter woods is it gives you m more range of colouring. So you can go from very light to really dark and you can you can do that with 10 or 20 shades quite easily on this sort of wood. If you get a darker piece of wood, like this, if you look at it, if you sort of see, this is kind of, um, you know, this sort of shade already. So if you like, um, you know, if, if I equate that to that shade, then I, there's at least three shades that you can see here that I can't achieve on this wood. Um, possibly a fourth. Uh, just because it's already darker than those are. Um, you can still get sort of the same number of graduations on here, but it's a lot more subtle uh, and a lot harder to do. So effectively what I would say is the whiter the wood, the more colours you can get. You've got more range in which to get those colours in. So if you take a wood like ebony, for example, which is virtually black, or purple heart, which is quite a dark wood, you may only get two or three or f maybe four levels of pyrography shading on that wood. Uh, ebony, you might only get one. It would be a case almost of it's there or it's not on, on that sort of wood. You can still apply pyrography to them. Uh, even on stuff like that. I mean, purple heart uh, would be quite nice because it's a it's purple uh, with black, you know, dark black on it. You could get some quite nice images, I think, out of that. And, but photographic type images, people, portraits, tend to be better on the lighter woods. Now, you then you come into the wood itself. And what you're looking for for pyrography, usually, is wood that doesn't have any knots in it. Knots on something like this, a knot would not look good. Um, if you're doing a freehand image and you've got a piece of wood, there's a knot in it, you can you can work that into your image. You can make it the sun, for example, depending on where it is, or it's a hole in the ground, or something like you can build that into your image. But if you're actually doing something that that's not free form in that way then generally knots are not very good. So you're looking for wood that doesn't have knots, which is higher quality wood. The also you're looking at is, the, is what would be the grain or the ring structure of the woods. So here, if you're looking at this wood, you probably can't see the grain of the wood, you, not very well, even if you're even looking at it here in real life. If you cut a piece of wood, you'll tend to see rings 
you know, if you were to cut it all the way across, if you cut it at a slant, you see lines. Um, now, with some woods, those lines that you see, the sort of the rings, the growth rings of the tree, you, you, they are the sort of, how do I describe it, sort of, there's the ring bit which is quite hard usually and then there's a bit between the rings which is quite soft. So if you take something like pine, that's usually a very pronounced structure. You can see the grain very easily and the, the hard bits will not take pyrography very easily at all. The bits between it is very soft, it takes it really easily and it shrinks quite a lot Does the wood. So you end up with a very textured surface and if you were trying to do a smooth area like this you'd end up with sort of dark bands with light bands in between and it's really hard work to get them the same colour. Something like birch, poplar, basswood, there um, the, the structure of the wood there it is quite fine there is next to no difference between the, the ring bit and the bit between so in, in this for example you can't really see any difference because of the grain of the wood so you tend to look for those types of woods that have that you know, I guess if you look at a piece of wood and you can't see the, the grain very well or it's even fairly even that's probably a good wood to do pyrography with ones where it's very visible is probably going probably going to be down quite difficult I haven't tried every single wood so I don't know but you know um, the sort of thing that people immediately think of like pine is quite a difficult one uh, and the last thing I guess to talk about is um, uh, is is the wood itself in some ways I'm using plywood here the reason I'm using plywood is it means I can use a thin sheet and when you apply pyrography if you apply it to toast for example or you cook meat it bends and it bends because it shrinks so if you if you cook the top surface of toast it it curls up because the top surface shrinks pulling it in uh, pyrography is the same I'm cooking the surface of the wood so on something this size this already is warped not a lot but it is it was flat when I started um, and if you look down down the side there's not a lot of warp on it if this was a solid piece of birch it would be bent considerably the plywood the way in which plywood is made with the cross uh, uh, it's made by crossing the alternate layers um, at angles to each other that resists the bend I mean, that's part of, part of the reason why they make it that way uh, which makes doing pyrography on it a lot easier to do this um, I'd probably need to use um, a piece which is at least twice as thick of solid uh, solid wood possibly even three times as thick in order for it not to warp very much whilst I do a piece of this size so um, you yeah, know wood wood choice actually can be quite important to a successful um, piece in the end plus the other reason why I use plywood or is it's easier to hang and it's cheaper <laughs> than thick pieces of wood um, but getting a hold of good quality plywood it's not the sort of plywood that you generally get in a home center a, a, a DIY shop that sort of thing um, they tend to be um, pine faced and pine is not a good wood to work with uh, birch is um, but uh, and certainly construction plywood is it's it's even worse quality plywood actually has a quality indicator uh, which starts at I think double A or triple A for the best surface down to E I think it is um, and the A's tend to be not free surfaces and triple A's is is to better better quality than than just not free um, and birch plywood tends to be single sided this is this is twin sided but it tends to be single sided often so you need to know which side it is 
and each side has, has a grading so um, you can put A and B on one side and A on the other and things like that I mean this has got a knot in it so that wouldn't be an A graded piece of wood something like that I'd do that maybe as the sun with an image here like a beach for example so you could build that in, into your image um, that side's actually lighter than that one but um, I didn't want to use the knot Um, wood, plywood that's used for laser cutting actually is, is usually a good, um, a good source of wood because the laser cutting requires a reasonably consistent colour on the surface to cut, cut well uh, and to have fairly good, um, good quality as well. Often because laser cut wood is also used for, construct, you know, for constructing boxes and things, um, stuff that's going to be seen. So again, they want to use um, better quality wood. I shall do a bit more of this. I'm talking a lot and telling you all, <laughs> all about it and not doing any of it. So at this, uh, at this particular stage on this bit here, you're probably, you, the changes are going to be relatively subtle to what you're watching. Because they won't be, uh, I'm not suddenly wanting to make some areas of it really dark all of a sudden. I'm kind of just filling in the bits that didn't quite colour. And I'm just making this area a little bit darker than the rest of it. Almost as though it's like a shadow, but the the what I'm doing is I'm doing it sort of fairly gradually because I don't want a sudden dark edge. What I want is kind of it to fade between the this and that, so you don't almost don't notice that it's changed changed colour. In fact, I'm specifically trying to stay away from creating an edge where you sort of have a defined colour change. Now in the darker areas I actually have to apply the, the amount of heat isn't quite proportional so it's it's not kind of like twice as dark is twice the amount of heat it's more like twice as dark is three times the amount of heat um, and that's not a pretty, that's not a hard and fast rule or anything like that. That's just sort of that's what it seems like. Uh, as I'm doing this, if I want to sort of make an area uh, quite a bit darker, I'm not. It, I'm sort of feeling like I've got a slow write down. And that went a bit darker than I intended, but that's okay. As Bob Ross would say, it's a happy accident. <laughs> um, I just incorporate it into the image most of, most of the time. Yeah, it might be in this case. It's it's a it's like a cloth banner, so. It's just a sort of a, a slight fold in the paper. Or the banner. When you are applying pyrography, if you do something like that, which goes darker than you want, and you don't have a reason for it, you know, you don't have a, like I do, an already built excuse as to why that might be there, then what you, um, what you do is you disguise it. If I made all the rest of it that same colour, then that's no longer darker. So I sort of darken. If I wanted to sort of hide that, I darken the rest of the banner. And that then, there's no contrast, you don't see the difference. So I kind of hide it in that way. 
um, with, rather than sort of erase it. There is no erase really with uh, pyrography. And sometimes, because that's gone darker, that may mean I have to make the next bit that's next to it darker because it then looks too white, and then the next bit next to that has to go darker. It can mean doing you know, a fair proportion, darkening the, a fair proportion of the rest of the image, just because you've made a small mistake like that. And uh, that's just one of those things that you deal with. I mean, I can treat a little bit here with the, with the banner. As I say, it's it's cloth, it's slightly folded and what have you, so it doesn't really make that much difference. But I can also just sort of fade that out a little bit uh, across there, um, so I don't get so, such a. Uh, if I if I make the edge more blurred, it doesn't draw your eye quite so much, and you don't see it quite as dark. So there's all sorts of tricks that you it plays with your eyes sometimes in terms of sort of things like you, this this lettering that's here probably looks white to you almost certainly I suspect it looks white to you it kind of looks white to me on the monitor and uh, it's not it's the color of this wood here in fact it's slightly darker than the color of this wood here and yet um, it looks white because it's got the black outline and it's got this darker edge around it. And it's a, it's a weird sort of thing how you, your eye, oh, well I, eyes and bra uh, brain I guess come um, together, will sort of fool you into seeing things that actually aren't there, like the colour white for example. Or if um, I, I was doing an eye for example, you tend to, tend to see a colour green. Or, or occasionally yellow, uh, depending if I make it light enough. And uh, it's just your eye sort of expecting to see a colour difference that isn't there. And it sort of injects one of its own accord. So there's all sorts of interesting things you see sometimes with uh, paragraphic images in, in what people can see in them. And it's a little bit light is this um, down here across the bottom so I'm just going to uh, cook it a little bit longer and just darken it off. It's a lovely sort of a, an orangey brown colour at the moment. It's often the details of um, an image like this, where I'm just adjusting the, the colours slightly and the shading slightly, which take the longest to do. It's, it's relatively easy, but can be um, quite time consuming to fill in a whole block of colour. Um, yeah, it might take an hour or so to fill that in, but then you can spend another hour just uh, adjusting the bits to, to even out the colour and the shades that you want and things like that. I don't play any at all, Clam Shooter. <laughs> Super Speedy there, I, uh, I believe, does. He's um, he's a um, what's the what's the word he's got? He's quite an experienced player, I think, from from his descriptions. He's been telling me some very interesting stories about um, bad decks. Or what people describe as bad decks being more kind of players who could be um, could learn how to how better to utilize the decks that they've got <laughs> and yes it is super uh, lurking is quite good fun sometimes <laughs> 
Why am I doing this bit? No, it's not a commission. This one isn't. Um, quite happy to do them, but this one isn't. This is. Um, this was uh, super speedy there again. Uh, at the beginning, uh, end of last week, I just finished doing something. He says I've just finished off some. Oh yeah, I just finished. Um, I just finished off this uh, this bracelet. And um, that I that I'd done in chainmail, and I was going to do some pyrography, but I just couldn't think of. There are times when inspiration just skips out the window, and I just could not think of an image to do. And so I was do I was doing something else. I was doing some magic dots, uh, and uh, explaining this. And, and Super Speedy there was talking about Heartstone and. Um, and I was thinking about doing some, um, as he says, I was thinking about maybe doing cards or a character from one of the popular games. You know, I don't know, something from uh, uh, Destiny 2 or something like that. Maybe, maybe the, I call it a bit, but whatever that little floating thing is, the ghost. And um, Super Speedy there suggested uh, doing a Heartstone cut. Yeah, why not? Sounds like a good idea. It's a good fit to an A4 piece of uh, uh, wood. And um, he gave me the suggestion of this particular card. So I'm, it's, I'm doing it for the fun of it, really. Although I suspect when I finished it, I'll probably put it up in the shop. Um, but uh, we'll see. I don't know. I, sometimes I keep the pieces that I do and sometimes I, I don't. Well, that's very kind of you to say. That probably means I'm fin late finishing the stream, but thank you very much. <laughs> she actually said it's 9.24pm, which is actually true, and it's about time that I brought the stream to a close for tonight. Um, it then lets me get uh, have a little bit of time before I go to bed to do one or two other things, like upload even more YouTube videos. I <laughs> that's good timing there, wasn't it? Um, I'm gradually, for those of you that may be watching, if I'm gradually uploading my whole Twitch archive of broadcasts onto YouTube. That's over 700 hours of broadcasting, three quarters of a terabyte of video, and something like about 400 individual video files gradually being uploaded. So if you would like to see any of the old videos, the old broadcasts, then uh, the, the, take a look at uh, youtube.com slash out. Good night, Clem Shudder. That's uh, great to have you around. Thanks. Drop by again if uh, you'd like to see some more. We'll be doing some more of this tomorrow night. We'll be doing more of this until I finish it, uh, however long it takes. Um, the other things that are on the bottom right, of course, are the the two usual social media channels. Twitter's quite good. I do tweet when I'm going live, and if I can't go live, it's a good source of knowing if I'm going to be around. And uh, odd things about new crafts or new projects that I start, that sort of thing. Or when I get new rings delivered through the post, I sometimes will like that. I'll sometimes tweet. These are um, chainmail rings, uh, niobium. Because I keep forgetting the metal, it's written on the other side. And uh, nice sort of chameleonish sort of colour. Is that? It's a blue purple. Um, so, good place to keep up to date with what's going on. Uh, Facebook there as well. And of course, I've mentioned it the, uh, the Etsy shop, zaragonart.etsy.com. It's the jewellery at the moment, mostly. But I will. At some point, probably this will go on to there, but some of the other pieces, uh, pyrography pieces that aren't personal to me, uh, will go up there as well. I think I've got some Hy uh, a Hyrulean symbol and that sort of thing on the box. And finally, I'm just going to mention the two buttons at the top right of the screen, the follow button. If you would care to follow, like Clown Shudder did earlier on this evening, thank you very much again if you're still around for the follow. Uh, that way, of course, you'll get to be notified or appear on your favourites page and on the who's broadcasting. 
and also the subscription button that's up there as well. Subscriptions go towards assisting the stream to keep streaming in terms of buying things like wood, which isn't unfortunately very cheap. It grows, it is trees, it doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> um, and good trees are expensive. And uh, any other things like new pens for uh, for pyrography and things like that. So with that, um, if you'd like to see me again tomorrow, I should be streaming somewhere between 1900 hours and 2000 hours GMT. The start time unfortunately varies depending on work commitments and things like that when I've got home from work, when I've had a meal, but between that sort of range I should be live. Then going on for approximately two hours to around 9, 9.30pm at night. With that I hope to see you on the stream tomorrow, if not in the future. Bye for now.